this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make a unique sweater design that has a wrap front with a tie. I'll be working with Galileo yarn. It's a sport weight and the color I'm using is Apollo and it's a blend of merino wool and bamboo. I'll be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is a G plus and I'll be using a furls streamline hook for this project. Okay, I think you're going to love this yarn. This is from We Crochet and the link will be in the description box. It's really beautiful. It has a beautiful sheen and it's going to have a nice drape for this project. So we will begin at the back. We're gonna work the back and the front panels all in one piece, and then we'll be attaching the sleeves. So let's begin by chaining out a total of 69. Now I'm gonna do a smaller swatch just to get you started, and you can go to the blog post, the link will be in the description, and you can find sizes in extra small to 5X. So just make sure your chain is not too tight. Okay, so for the demonstration, I've just chained up 13. What you'll wanna do now, if you take a look at your chain, we're gonna flip it on its side and we're gonna go through those back humps. That's why you don't want your chain too tight or I find it really difficult to work into them. So we're just gonna work single crochets across Okay, so in the back bump there of each chain. And that will give our edge, as you can see here, a really nice finished edge when you work in the back bumps like that. So I'll continue that now off camera. Okay, so once you have worked across, you should have a total of 68 stitches for this size. Then we'll chain one and turn, and we will repeat a row working just single crochets across. And once you've reached the end of that row, we're gonna chain two and turn. Okay, and now we're gonna begin working double crochet stitches. So yarn over, going through the first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two and you'll work double crochets all the way across. Okay, so your chain two won't be included as a stitch. You'll continue to work across. You should have 68 double crochet stitches. Okay, so this first double crochet row here, this is our right side that we've worked across. So what I like to do is just add a stitch marker and what this will just keep us on track as to what is our right side. It has a really nice pretty edge here. So this will be the right side of our work. So what you can do is you can just go ahead and attach a marker to the front of your work and then that will just keep you on track for what your right side is. So this is where things will switch up a little bit. This is gonna be our pattern now. We're gonna chain two and turn, and we're gonna be working, instead of going into the stitch, we are gonna work between the stitches. See how we have this nice gap between each stitch? We're just gonna work our double crochet right in between. So you are just gonna buzz through this pattern It's really quick. And so you'll just keep working across. And I'll just keep going till I get to the end. It can be kind of tight to get into that last so what you're doing is you're gonna find the little space between your starting chain and that double crochet, and you're gonna work your last stitch right in there. 
Okay, so if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I know I'm on track and you should have a total of 68 for this size, okay? We'll just do the same thing. We're gonna chain two and turn. And again, we're just gonna be going right between. The only one that's tricky is this one at the very end that's a little bit snug. Okay, you're just going to continue and you're going to get a nice edge. You're going to see this is what your edge is going to look like as you work. So now I have worked up a total of 40 rows and I'm going to measure, but when we measure here, I'm going to go from the side. So I have some tails here. What I've done when I've changed over my balls, it's ended up that I've been pretty close to the end of a ball and I've just joined in my new ball at the end. I also suggest the Russian join. Um, you don't want any knots in your work in this fine yarn. I would try to do it at the end like I have and just change. That might mean that you have a little bit of a longer tail, but it's worked out that I've been able to change over on the end. And if not, if you come to that join partway through a row, I suggest the Russian join method. That's why you can see my tails because I haven't woven those in yet. But what you want to do is also measure on the side. So I have, if you measure on the side, I have about 15 inches worth of length. So this is where, again, you can change you can alter up the pattern. So this will be the length from your shoulder to your waist. I want this sweater to fit around the waist and it's going to tie around the waist as we wrap around the front. So I have gone with about 15 inches. If you need to alter that, just work more. This is gonna be your halfway point. So this will be your measurement from your shoulder to where you want the cardigan to sit. Okay, so if you need it a little bit longer, just work a couple more rows. I would just suggest working in multiples of two just so we stay with um, the right side because we wanna stop that we're working back to the right side here. So what I have done at this point now is marked off my neck opening. So what we'll begin to do now is work one panel at a time. So I've marked off my neck and I've counted over a total of 20 stitches and I've marked the next stitch. Counted over 20 stitches and I've marked the next stitch, okay? So from marker to marker, our neck opening, let's give it a count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23. 6, 27, 28 stitches. Okay, so 20, 20, and 28 makes a total of 68. So now follow along with your pattern for the size you're working on because this will vary. But what we have now is we'll be working across, so we're leaving this all unworked. All 28 stitches here will be left unworked. What we're going to do now is join back on. Okay, so we're finishing off this row. Chain two and turn. And we're gonna be working across our 20 stitches. If you're working a, dip, a bigger size, you'll have more stitches. If you're working a smaller size, you'll have fewer stitches. Okay, so I'm gonna work that across to my marker. Okay, so I'm gonna work across and in my 20th stitch, I'll add one stitch. We'll then chain two and turn. And in the first stitch, we're going to add two double crochets. And then we'll work 
in the spaces across one per stitch. So now what we're going to do is every row we're going to add an extra stitch so we'll be increasing every row. Okay, so once you get to the end we'll chain two and turn. And we're going to work back across. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I'm, so I'm working back across. We're coming to our last stitches here. So we're going to do a stitch here. And then we need to find that space between the chain two and the last stitch. And we're going to add two double crochets. Chain two. Chain two. And turn. And then we will add two in that first space. And we will just continue in this manner, increasing every row at the neckline. Okay, so we're always increasing over at the neckline where the stitch marker is and keeping this over here nice and straight. Okay, so what we're gonna do is continue. So now this row here, that does not include the increase, this is gonna be our center row. So this, you could look at this row as being the very top of the shoulder row. So from here down, we had 40 rows. So starting at our, our increase row, so this one right here, where the increase is, we're going to have an additional 40 rows. So from here, it'll be a total of 41, but this one here is gonna be sort of that center at the neck, okay? So we're gonna continue working this side until we have 40 rows of increase. So we should have a total of 60 stitches. We started with 20, we're adding one every row. So we should end up with a total of 60 stitches. So now what we're gonna do over on this side is we need to go to our right side. So this is where it's helpful to have this mark. So for the front left, we're gonna come over here to our marker. Okay, I marked the same as this side. So we have 20 stitches that are unmarked here. We're just going to join in. We're going to chain two, and in that space right here, we're gonna work a double crochet. And a double crochet in every space across. So we'll work this across. This will be that center shoulder row, and then we'll work back across ending with the increase. So I'm gonna just go ahead, work across 20 stitches. I'll come back and meet you up. Okay, so I'm working up to the end. I'm gonna just pull that apart to find that space. And now we're adding two double crochets in that last space. So we've now increased to 21 stitches. We'll chain two and turn. And work two double crochets in that first space. Okay, so both pant front panels are worked in the same manner. We're just doing those increases on opposite, uh, opposite ends, but we are making sure that all the increases are, are at the neck opening, right, as our collar. So this will continue so that our pieces end up crossing over, okay? So the pieces, this neckline is um, fairly wide and then our pieces will come and cross as we work them both. So I'm gonna work them both up off camera, making sure we have 40 rows of increase in that one row here. So both sides, once I have that completed, I'll meet you back up for the next step. Okay, so we're looking here at our front left panel. So I'm on my 
the right side of my work. I have my marker here to make sure. So I'm on my right side. I've worked up my first row at 20 stitches and then I've increased for another 40 rows so that I have a total of 60 stitches at the end. So now what I did is I worked back across one row of single crochet and then I'm going to fasten that off. Okay, so now let's take a look at, okay, so now here's my front right side. I've again done the same thing. So I'm finishing here at that 40th row with my last increase. And now I'm going to chain one, turn and work single crochets across in every stitch. So I'm gonna work across my single crochets and then I will chain one turn and work right back across in single crochet stitches. And that will be bringing us back to the right side of my work. Okay, so we've worked back across. Now what I'm gonna do is chain out for our tie. So you can adjust the tie for your body. So what I did is I took a measuring tape and I just held it at my side because you figure this is going to go across your front. So it's going to be at your side. Take the measuring tape around your back and pull it out in front of you and kind of just judging that you have enough to sort of tie that into a bow. So for, for myself, I'm going to do about 34 inches. So you want to chain out, not too tight, but chain out that in length. So about 34 inches and I'll keep track of my chains as well. So for this size, this is a good length, but as you go up in size, you'll want to increase that slightly. Okay, so I chained out 101. It's probably closer to about 30 inches with stretch, but I was just thinking as we pull this and pull it around and stretch, I probably didn't need quite as much length. This to me seems like a good length. So I'm gonna go with 101 chains and it'll end up being 100 when we crochet back. So you're gonna go back in the second chain from the hook and I'm gonna go in the back humps of the chain. So as you can see all those little bumps sticking up, that's what we're gonna work into. Okay, so you should have 100, so I'm just gonna work all the way across. Okay, so then what we'll do as we work down, we're gonna then edge all of the side. We're gonna come down to this side. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna chain out 101, and then we're gonna finish off working across and finishing so that this side also has the two rows of single crochet. Okay, so that's sort of what we're gonna do now to finish off this part of our project. So I will continue down my chain and then just meet you up to give you an idea of how we're going to evenly uh, crochet up the side. Okay, so what I am going to do is drop down to a bit smaller hook size as I work up the side. I, we just may find, you could try it with uh, the 4.5, but it may just get a little bunchy, so I'm gonna try to work with a bit smaller hook and hopefully I'll get a nice smooth edge. So I have already worked through one single crochet for each single crochet row, but now every double crochet row, you're gonna wanna add two. Two single crochets. Okay, and this is where once you get a bit worked, I could have even switched over to the smaller hook, even for the chain and I, but I think it looks okay. But yeah, I think this is going to keep my edge, keep that edge line nice and tight and 
If not, I would just really pull your tension tight if you're using the bigger hook. But as you can see, it looks like that's going to crochet the side nice and smooth. You don't want it. Um, you don't want it bunching that it's pulling too tight or that you're not getting a nice smooth line and that your edging is too loose. So just playing around with the hook is an easy way to just adjust that tension. Okay, so that's looking really nice. So I am gonna continue working up the side Okay, but then when you get across the neck part here, you just need to do one obviously per stitch going across. And then once you get again to our double crochet rows, you're gonna add two, you're gonna work all the way down and I'll meet you up over here on the other side. Okay, so I've worked all the way now to the bottom. And what I did is I added an extra stitch in the corners. So for your rows, you're doing two, so we had a total of 41 rows, so that should be 82 stitches plus one in each corner, one and then 28 across, and then one and then back down again. Okay, so then once you get to the bottom, we'll change over to that, um, our larger hook, and I will chain out again 101. Okay, so I'm gonna work my chain up off camera. Okay, and now once you have your 101, we're gonna do the same thing like we did on the other side. We're gonna turn, working in the back humps, working single crochets across. So you should have a total of 100 for your tie or follow along with the pattern for the size you're working on. Each size will go up a little bit. Okay, but again, you can always adjust this. So I'm gonna work across now my chain, working all in those back humps. And then when I get back to the body, I'm just gonna continue working across in single crochets and then we can fasten off. Okay, so I've worked to the end of my chain. And I'm going to just start working right across the bottom in single crochets. Okay, so it's gonna be a nice transition. Okay, so I'm just gonna work that across Fasten off and I'll meet you up. Okay, so I fastened that off, but you can see the beautiful edge that I've made and this all is looking really good. So the next step, you wanna just get all of those ends. We've got ends all over the place. So just weave all of your ends in, make sure you get that done. And then we'll, we will do the blocking. So I'm gonna wet mine in some lukewarm water you can just add a tad of dish soap or if you have wool wash i'll have the link in the description box for the wool wash you can just put a little bit of that in the water and just allow this to soak for 25 to 30 minutes then we'll squeeze out all the excess water i like to roll mine in a towel just to make sure it's not dripping squeeze all that water out and then I will lay it out on my blocking mats and I'll pin it to the schematic measurements. So that's gonna be my next step for this section of the pattern. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to find my center sleeve spot and I'm gonna mark it. So that first row if you remember before we started increasing, there's gonna be that row here that was at the 20 stitches. That is the shoulder spot. So I'm just gonna mark mine ahead of time just so that I know that 
that is going to be my center. So I've gone ahead and worked my sleeves. I'm not going to work them right onto this piece because I'm just thinking that could get confusing. Oh, it looks like I grabbed the wrong row here. So how you can follow the row is this row here is from the back. So this is the first one here. So that is going to be the center. That is going to be the shoulder center. So when you attach the sleeve, we're going to line it up to the center here and across. And we will just do, it will be really simple to seam this sleeve onto this piece. And I think it will help you not having to figure out the stitches across. It'll just be easier in the long run. So I'm going to weave these ends in. I'm going to get this blocked. And next I'm going to show you how to crochet the lace sleeves. Okay, so here is the sleeve and I have steam blocked it and blocking it is really going to make your lace stitch pattern look a lot nicer. So if when you're crocheting it, it doesn't look quite like this, that's okay because it's going to block out really nice. So to save time, I steam blocked this so I can get showing you how to put the cardigan together. So my sleeve is 14 inches wide by about 18 inches long. So this will be a fairly long sleeve because the cardigan will be a drop shoulder style. Now it's really easy though to modify because we're just working uh, repeats of the rows. So you can just stop wherever you're comfortable with your sleeve length. Okay, so this is how it looks. This is a fairly easy stitch pattern. It's a four row repeat. So let's get started and I'll make a small swatch and show you how to work it so up. So our shell stitch pattern is worked in multiples of eight plus two. So for the size that we've been working on in this tutorial, you will chain out a total of 58 and that will get you a sleeve that is about 14 inches. If you need the sleeve, if you want the sleeve bigger to give it a more oversized look, just work up that multiple of eight plus two. You can make your sleeve really whatever size you want. Follow along with your pattern for the size you're working on for how many to chain. So to make this little tutorial go up a little quicker, I am just gonna do 16 plus two. So I'm just gonna do 18 stitches, but it's gonna show you how to work this pattern. So you'll be fine. And in the pattern, in the PDF pattern, you also get the stitch chart if you find that easier to work from. So don't make those chains too tight. You just want to loosely chain out and you'll be doing a total of 58. Okay, so now we'll work the foundation row. So what we'll do is work in the second chain from the hook. There's one, two, and we'll work a single crochet. And then we're going to skip three, one, two, three, and into the next stitch, we'll work five double crochets. I'm going to chain two, one, two. So skip over one, two, three, and in the next, we'll work five doubles. One, two, three. Four and five. Okay, and then we'll chain two again. We'll skip over three chains, one, two, three. And in the next chain, we're gonna work a single crochet. And then we'll chain two. We'll skip over three chains, one, two, three. And in the next chain, we will work five double crochets. Okay, so now I'll chain two, but we're gonna continue in this manner. Okay, as you work along, you're going to have your five, your chain two, a single crochet, chain two, 
five doubles, chain two, and then you would do a single, chain two, and just keep repeating that all the way along. We're coming to the end. So I've chained two, skip over three, and you should have that in that fourth stitch, the last stitch, you'll be working a single crochet. Okay, and that completes our foundation row. And now we'll get into our four row repeat. Once you get going, this repeat is really easy to remember, but you may need to go through a few repeats just to get the hang of it. So we're going to chain up four. I'm going to turn and now we're skipping over this section here. We're going to be working into the shells. Okay, so we're going to work a double crochet. We're going to chain two. We're going to skip a stitch and in the center stitch, we're going to work a double crochet, chain two and a double crochet chain two and then in the last double crochet stitch of the shell we're going to work another double so always these shells we're going to be working this pattern in them now we'll chain one we're going to skip all the way across all of this and we're getting to the next shell we're going to do the same thing so we'll double crochet chain two double crochet chain two in the same stitch a double crochet chain two and in the last stitch of the shell we'll do a double crochet and now always again between all these shells we're just chaining one and then working this pattern and that's your repeat going across when we get to the end you always need to think you need to end as you begin so we started with a chain four. So to end, we're going to chain one. And then in that last stitch, we're going to work a double crochet. And that counts equals a chain four. Okay, so that is row one of the repeat. So now for row two of the repeat, we're going to start out with a chain three. I'm going to turn and in this space here, we are going to work two double crochets. Okay, so this forms a half shell on this corner. Now we'll chain two and in that chain two space, we're gonna work a single crochet. We're gonna chain two and then in that chain one space, so that space we made between the shells, we're gonna work another shell. So that shows that our shells are gonna be offset. So we're going, putting this shell in between those shells and that's how the pattern will look as you go. So always just kind of, so we're skipping over this section and in here we're working another shell. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll chain two. And then always in this um, little V we've made, we're doing that single crochet. Okay, and then you would chain two and you would again work another shell in the next chain one space and you would continue working across in that manner. But we're coming to the end and again, we want to end as we begin. So we'll chain two and in our turning chain here in this really sort of that chain one space, we're gonna work <clears throat> we're going to work three doubles. So we're doing two doubles really in the chain one space. And then for it to be consistent with the start, we would do the last one in the third chain of the chain three. Okay. And then that completes row two. So it should be looking like this. So now for row three, we're going to start out with a chain four, one, two, oops, three, four. That's counting as a double crochet and a chain one. In that same space, first stitch, we're going to work a double crochet. Now we're going to chain two. 
And this is a half shell. So if you remember how we worked that pattern with our shells, so this is forming sort of half of it. And then we're doing a double crochet in the third stitch, that double crochet right there. And then we need to do a chain one in between the shells. So now in the first stitch of the shell, we're gonna do a double crochet. We're gonna chain two, skip a double crochet. In the next double crochet, we'll work a double, chain two, a double, and we'll chain two, and skip a stitch in the next we'll do a double. Okay, and then you chain one, you chain one again, and then in the next shell you do the same pattern, okay? But now we're coming to the end. So we're gonna chain one, and we have to work the half shell pattern, so we're gonna work a double crochet in the first, chain two, and then in the last we're gonna do a double, chain one, and a double. So in the top of that turning chain. Okay, so the end equals the front, and then we're repeating this pattern throughout. So that completes row three of the repeat. Okay, so now for row four, we're gonna chain one, and that counts as a single crochet, and then we're going to do a single crochet into that chain one. Then we're going to chain two, and in our chain one space, we're going to put a shell stitch. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so again, the shells are offset. So we have shells here, we have a shell in the center here, and then I've got a shell going up now, up above this one. Okay, and then we'll chain two. And here's that V that I talked about on the other row, we're putting that single crochet in that V, the chain two space. Chain two, and then in the next chain one, space will work another shell. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we want to end like we begin, but if we were continuing, we'd be chaining to working a single crochet in that next V stitch, chain two, and then just continue in that manner. As we come to the end, we're gonna chain two. And let's find our stitches here. So in the chain one space, we'd be doing a single crochet. And then in the top of that um, chain three, third chain of the chain, we would do another single crochet. Okay, so that completes. And then all we do now is start repeating that repeat. So rows one through four, and we continue just growing the sleeve. So let me just work through row one again, just one more time with you. Okay, so I'm gonna chain four. Okay, and then we're skipping over and working into the first double crochet. Chain two, and in, we're skipping one in the next, in the center of the shell double, chain two, double, chain two, and then a double. And I do really find this easy to memorize. Chain one, skipping over to the next shell, a double, chain two, skipping over one and in the center, double, chain two, and a double, chain two, and a double. And then to finish it off, we're gonna chain one and work a double crochet in that last stitch. Okay, so we just continue. Now for the 18 inch sleeve that I um, 
created, I worked a total of 39 rows. So when I wanted to end on a row two, because I liked having the half shells on the side. So I ended up not finishing and I also wanted the shell pattern on the, on the end. So I wanted to end on a row two instead of a row four. It's not a huge deal if you decide to end on the row for it, that's fine. Depending on what sleeve length you're going for, it would be fine to end on either if you're measuring out your inches. So this is what mine looks like ending on that, starting with that half shell, so the row two. And like I say, I did a total of 39 rows. An easy way to count. I just went, this is two, I found all the little V's, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and 39 is my final row. But if you wanted to bring it down, so if you ended on a row four, you could end on this row or you could end on this row and make your sleeve shorter if needed or vice versa if you needed to a longer sleeve then just continue with some more rows and see with the blocking it is going to flatten it out and make your stitch pattern look nice it, it will look a little bit wonky before you block it but again block to measurements for the size you're working on 14 by 18 for this one and I steam block just to just to make sure things um I could Put the cardigan together today so I steamed it so it would dry quickly but if you don't have a steamer just wet it same process as the body section you're just going to wet it take the water out squeeze as much water and then just lay it out on your mats pin it out let it fully dry and it's going to give it a nice finished look and then we're going to meet back up now and put it okay together. so for now putting it together seaming it up you want to have your right side facing your body. Here again is our center section. Now we've ended on the right side of our sleeve. Okay, so if you look, take a look, examine your shell there, you're ending, your tail should be here on your left. Okay, and then that's the right side. So your sleeve is going to come on here like this, but when we sew it, we want right sides facing. So you flip your sleeve so that it's like this. Now, knowing that this is the center, I'm gonna measure out, my sleeve here is 14 inches. So depending on the size you're working on, your measurements could be a bit different, but what I wanna do so I make sure that I sew it exactly at the 14 inches. I'm gonna measure from my center seven and seven going the other way. I'm gonna mark that just so I'm sure that I'm sewing my sleeve on evenly. Okay, so now I know as I'm sewing this that I need to get these markers. Another thing you could even do, you could mark the center little tip you can just take this marker here's the center and we can just attach it okay and then we know we're getting this sewn right on now i'm going to weave in this little tail i'm going to use another piece of yarn and i'm going to sew this together so when i'm cutting off a tail for sewing i like to at least do double the length of what I'm sewing, usually that gives us enough so that we don't run out. Now I've done a good job at steaming this and making sure it's pulled right out to the 17 inches. You want to make sure that, or the 14 inches, you don't want this tight um, being sewn onto the material. You want it stretched out. 
which blocking it has done that for me. So I'm going to go through where I know And then I'm going to go on to the end here. And I want to make sure to get this knotted. I'm going to move that marker now. Okay, so I'm going to focus on this first section. So I'm going to pull it. To make sure that it's stretched out. You're just going through a small section on the body and basically working through the chain of the sleeve. Okay, so I'm going to work across to my marker and then I'll meet you back up again. Okay, so I worked right into that stitch marker. I'm just going to remove it now. And down here at the next one, I am going to just hook in that. And again, we're going to stretch it out and we're just going to continue sewing the sleeve on. Easy peasy. Just take your time. Okay, so I'm going to finish that off. Okay, so I'm finishing this up. You can take a look at it before you weave in any tail so you can see how it looks. Okay, and I think it looks good. I'm happy with the transition. I was pretty good with my estimate. I have enough left to weave that tail. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna weave that tail in. And I am gonna go and do the identical Thing to the other side. Okay, so I won't work through that with you. I'll finish my other sleeve and then I'll meet you up for the side seaming, which will completely, we'll have it all put together and then it's just a matter of putting it on and seeing how it fits. Okay, and I left a really long tail on my sleeve, so I should have enough for seaming that together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my other side here, and I'm gonna follow the same process. Okay, so I've sewn together this side, as you can see, and now I'm gonna show you how to do the other side. Okay, so you wanna make sure that your right sides are facing so we're going to do the sides and the sleeves all at one time. I've left a long strand of yarn attached to my sleeve so I don't need to join on. But if you haven't left a long strand, that's okay. Just join on a piece of yarn. And again, you're going to want a little bit more than double the length of the amount that you're going to be sewing. So for the sleeve, we want to make sure that we line up our lace pattern. So let's get started first just by getting our bottom here joined up. And then as you seam it, you will want to line up basically your chain spaces. So you may have to maneuver a, a little bit to get it to line up properly. Okay, and then I usually just put together a section sew it and then make sure that the next section is lined up and just continue in that manner. 
you just want to grab a little bit of yarn from each side. Okay, so we're just going through small section on the one side over to the other side. Okay, and we're just going to continue like this. So as you go, just make sure, if you take your time to just make sure everything's lined up, it's going to be much nicer when it's finished. So I'm going to go all the way up to the underarm. Once you get to your underarm here, you're just going to want to pull you can even use your stitch marker like this just to make sure that you're sewing this section. So basically just take your underarms and then just doing the same thing that I've just shown you, going through a little bit on this side, a little bit on that side, you're just gonna work your way down. Okay, so this takes a little bit of time, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera, and then I'll meet you up once I have it complete. Okay, so I've completed all my seaming, and what I did next is I just steamed my seams as well on the sleeve, and that just helps flatten it out and just gives it a really nice finish. So now what you're gonna do is when you put it on, you're gonna cross, you can cross either side, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna cross it over. And then you're gonna take it and just tie it around your back. Now, if you were to make this longer, um, you could bring it all the way back around to the front, but this is just the perfect length to take and tie around your back. So. This is a 38 inch bust and just to give you an idea, I have a 36 inch bust. So this is giving me two inches of ease and it's loose around the waist. So it's a, a more loose fit. Now if you'd like this to fit a little bit more snug, a little bit more fitted, you could make um, your exact bust size or even minus two. So sometimes if you have a negative ease, so if let's say you have a 36 inch bust, you could make it 34 inches and then that's going to give it a really nice fitted look. So you can play around with that. Look at the schematic, look at the sizes. I do have extra small to 5X in the pattern and then just choose the size where you feel you'd like it to fit. So if you want it to fit as I've modeled it with that two inches of ease, then make sure to pick the size that gives you that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap that bell so you stay updated on all my new videos. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.